Social constructs construct a picture house prison. It plays constantly moving images of what we should look like and who we should be. Most of us get crushed by the overwhelming pressure to perform and we fall short. But I feel bad for you, the ones who make it. Our fall is short, but you are propelled up to the lofty peaks of popularity and precariously pedestaled on approval. You are the pretty people. You become the molds that the media uses to paint us into portraits of inadequacy. But while we are forced to find an oasis of peace and reality, your heads are filled with illusions and mirages. We think we take too long in front of the mirror? We can only imagine the plight of someone who has been taught to believe that somewhere there's perfection in their reflection. You can't leave the house until you unearth it or bury it under a carefully practiced nonchalance. And even the slightest deviation or flaw has the power to create a discontent so deep you can fall into it. And you don't fall short, you fall headlong. I feel for you, pretty people. You must be so tired of trying to look like you just woke up after a 30 minute duvet photo shoot when you felt cute but might delete later. Trying to lift the weight of your insecurities at the gym but no matter how much you press, the size of your chest won't fill the weakness of what's behind it. That serpent still curls around you with promises of godlikeness. But you're trying to sculpt yourself into Zeus's image, Adam. We double tap your post-workout selfies when the weight has been put down, but you still carry a burden we all think we want. But a conversation with the revolving door of a therapist's office in Hollywood would probably spin our thinking. Remember the days before? Children lived free from this foolishness until it accosted them in the playground, in the classroom, at the park, or on TV, leaping from the disapproving eyes of rejection or pouncing after perching itself on compliments accompanied by cards at Valentine's. It chases them into adulthood in the direction of the land of eeriority for years. Superiority or inferiority until they collapse from exhaustion or maybe even descend into the holy sanctuary of being sexy. I feel really bad for the sexy people. You admire yourselves in your youth along with the rest but soon have to claim your lane in the race against time as you run out because sexy has a sell by date and it's best before you're grown enough to realize sexy isn't enough because it always has a price. You want to take to the sticks and stones that broke your bones at school and turn them into tokens you can trade in? That's cool, but instead of cheers, the prize is lusty leers when you abandon your fig leaves. And trust me, Eve, there's nothing impressive about being able to arouse an atom. That ache for radiance, to be captivating, comes from somewhere. And with that pride, we pollute. Maybe citric acid has burned our eyes since we snatched forbidden fruit, but you were both made in an image. And what you truly want, leaving sexy aside, what we all want, is beautiful. It's beauty. But the beauty the mankind peddles is like that last photocopy before the printer tells you it needs more toner. A fading imitation of brightly colored life like a shadow. It can stretch far and mimic being alive, but it has no weight, no heat, no substance. No love, no joy, no life. It is the centerpiece of that old picture house prison that is filled with lies. They lied when they told us it was only as deep as skin. Beauty has never needed melanin to wrap itself in. It's that something that reaches out from within and embraces the eye of the beholder. It exists in the song of the heavens that declare. It exists in the awe-inspired breath that escapes on the peak into mountain air where wonder meets marveling in dazzling humility. We may rarely wrap this word around our masculinity, but beauty is a something that points to something else. Whether in the majesty of the ocean's might, or the poetry of a bird in flight, or in the symphony of a song in the night, beauty points. It is a something that 
point to something else, but we're so preoccupied with pointing to ourselves in an effort to be adored, we try to smother it over our sores, our pores to fill up our empty, but it won't sink in because it's pointless. It's not pointing at anything. Beauty only exists as a something that points to something else. It points to the hand that held the brush that called contours out of the face of the earth. It points past meandering curves and babbling brooks to the righteous justice that rolls down like an ever-flowing stream. It points past broad shoulders and strong jaw lines to the only hand that can draw lines in the sand without a ruler. Sexy might get you noticed, but beauty will make him seen. Sexy will never know this, but beauty can't come from a skincare routine. Sexy will always sell itself. Beauty will always refrain. Sexy will answer whenever they call. But beauty is called by another name. That captivating quality. Grandeur without apology. Beauty has another name. He shared it with no one but sewed it like a garment for you with permission to wear it wherever you go in John 17, 22. Don't fall for that feeling of just feeling yourself being the center of your own story. You were made in the image of God. You were made to be clothed with his glory. <laughs>